All right, everybody. I want to sort of continue our discussion here of modal mixture and expand this just a little bit. Uh, we've we've been seeing a couple different options here for modal mixture, which is really great. We've talked a lot about, especially that uh, that sort of bringing in the minor four chord, sharing that sound. So if we're in major, right? That awesome sound, you know, sort of makes you just really adds that breadth to the palette. We talked the other day about how that's really associated to this sort of sound. That sort of sound is like a half diminished chord that we use a lot. We also talked about sort of the real shock value of the flat six chord, you know, and we're gonna see some examples uh, on on Wednesday, or we're going to see some examples down the line of some even farther afield modal mixture ideas we can do. Um, and so it feels like we've explored a lot, but there's actually one thing so far that has really um, unified everything that we've talked about involving modal mixture, which is the fact that we've always been borrowing from minor and bringing it into the major key. So we've always so far been in a major key and we've brought in sounds from the parallel minor, right? So that minor four chord, that's the kind of four chord you would have in minor and we're using it in major. Uh, the flat six chord, that, that's the chord that we would have in the parallel minor, right? So if we're in C minor, an A flat major chord is really common, that flat six, or the, it, which is just the six chord in minor. So everything we've done so far, we've borrowed from minor into major. But modal mixture can work the other way as well. So I want to talk about that element of it today. So we're just going to go uh, onto some into some notation here, and we're just going to sort of unpack this a bit. So one of the things that, that we can sort of really start to see when we start looking at borrowing major into minor, so we're bringing major into minor, is that we get a real focus here on what the sort of um, what the the home progression or I don't know if home progression is what I want to use, but the one of the central musical progressions that modal mixture ends up being a part of, and it really is uh, surrounding this descent to five, right? So starting on one, getting down to five. Uh, you know, a lot of harmonic progression, you know, like when, when we do something um, and I'm trying to set the, set the key, you know, I do a lot of like, right? We are sort of walking up to five, and so we could expand that to be like a, right? We have a lot of this, that kind of motion up to five, but the motion downwards to five is equally important and we're sort of exploring that and so we've taken this just sort of from the major scale descent you know that more recently we've mixed in this sort of interesting chord the five four two of four which takes the bass line from instead of being do ti la sol right we've got the g natural which which can give us this wider sound Right, sort of my chair got in the way there. Let's do it again. Right? With the do te. Excuse me. Do te la sol. My brain wasn't ready for the modal mixture. Um, right, that sort of motion um, has been a big part of what we've been doing. And then we expanded that, of course. And we had modal mixture in there as well. So after our 5, 4, 2, of 4, right? Here's 5, 4, 2, of 4. Here's major 4, 6, minor 4, 6. Woo. Getting to 5, right? So all of that descends, right? To this longer... I guess I had the sort of had that go there. So right? But going through that modal mixture. So the bass line. 
right? Still going one to five. And even what I have here, we could add in a five so that we had this true chromatic descent. I could put just like a normal five, six there or even put a seventh chord maybe. Right, but you get the idea. Everything has been about this descent and we know that we've got this beautiful moment here where even though we've got a secondary dominant, right, it still resolves to the four six that we expect it to, to resolve to. And we get this powerful mixture of sounds. And that's particularly useful here, right, because the minor, it really marries this idea of descent super well and it gives us that bass line. So it, this is a really, really great thing and there's that powerful, powerful, almost bait and switch where we've got the chord we expect followed by the chord we do not expect right and that that in many case in many ways is the strength of this progression we go from expectation which is really set up for us by the 54204 to sort of mystery expectation to mystery in a sense so all that sort of an elaborate introduction here to the question of the day which is, what if we wanted to use modal mixture in minor? What if instead of being in A major, we were in A minor? And we still wanted to ornament this downwards progression, right? This downwards motion from Do to Sol, right? Because that's still, that's such an invigorating progression, and it's a progression that we need to uh, sort of look at. And there ends up being a real fundamental question about how we use modal mixture. You can see that I've left this measure blank here and I've got all our question marks leading up to five. And that, of course, in the major key is where we went from major 4-6 to minor 4-6. And so what we can do is we can ask a couple fundamental questions here about about the way we do this. I'll just put that there. It doesn't really matter. There's nothing down here. But So what I'm trying to ask is, which order of the chords is most important musically? Because if we look at this, there's two ideas that we can draw from the way we've done it. Is it more important or is it better musically to go normal chord and then weird chord? That's kind of what we've got here, right? Like I was just saying, we go the normal chord, the major 4-6, to the weird chord before going to 5. Normal, then weird? Is that the most important thing? That's certainly an element in major that really stands out, right? Or is what makes this work the fact that we go major and then minor, right? The major chord and then the minor chord. Because again, that's another thing that we can take away. Major then minor, and that really tends to work. So why is that a question? Well, let's think about it. I've sort of already hinted at it here. Because in minor, if we followed this progression, right? If we went 5, 4, 2, a 4, I've already written it here. We would expect, right, that this should go to the minor version of the 4 chord, the 4, 6. I've sort of already written in here the natural in major, and I put the courtesy sharp here. So if we were thinking about that, the sort of expected progression would have F natural in the bass here. Put some parentheses there so that we can so that we can see it, right? That's what we would expect in minor. If we're in this key, if we're in A minor and we go one, I'm trying to voice it the same way, then five, four, two, a four. Where does our ear expect this to go? To minor 4, 6, right? That's the chord that makes the most sense in the progression. And that also, oopsie, that also fits in with how we have described this in our sort of first example here. Where did things get moved over, I wonder? I wonder. Let's move this back. That also fits in with how I described this in the first bullet point here. This would set us up really nicely to go normal, right? The chord that we expect in A minor, and then 
have it be followed by the chord that we don't expect, right? In minor, this 4-6 chord with F natural, which is in the key of A minor, is the normal one, right? If we listen to that progression again, this D minor chord, D, F natural, A, I can even write that up here, right? That's the chord that we expect, right? So, so far, so good. We're thinking, okay, then the, clearly this top one, the musically advantageous thing to do is to go normal, then weird, right? That's what we did over here. We went normal, then weird. And in minor, those are just reversed, right? The normal chord would be the minor 4, 6, D, F, A, which is in the key of A minor. And the weird chord, right, would be the one with the F sharp in it, which is very much not in the key signature of A minor. So if we did that, if we did normal, then weird, we would end up here with F sharp on the back side of the beat, right? So if normal, then weird is the principle that we should follow, that's what we would get, right? And again, as we're going through, everything sounds great. 5, 4, 2, a 4 goes to the 4, 6, the minor 4, 6. But then what's the problem here? It works, but there's something missing. Let's just listen to the bass line. See how it kind of gets all snaky? Because normal then weird sounds fine. Sounds like it's in a logical order. But the thing that really makes this progression work, listen to this one over here. The bass line just is the steady just descent into the depths. And here, we're descending, we're descending, things are happening. We get to uh, we get to F natural, which is solfege syllable what? We got do, te, le, and we know that le wants to go to sol, right? When we're on that chord, Right? That wants to drive downwards to five. And so in this case, normal then weird doesn't really work because these systems, the notes don't really know what key they're in, right? They only know where they want to go. That's what secondary dominance. They don't know what key they're in. All they know, like all of this chord knows, is that it wants to go there, right? The leading tone wants to resolve. And in the same way, lay wants to resolve to soul. F natural in A wants to go downwards to E. And so normal then weird, it doesn't actually always work for us. Normal then weird isn't as good as major then minor, or more importantly, la then lay, right? La then lay is way better because if I arrange this, if I switch these notes around, right, then we could still have the same bass line progression. I know that I know these chords are wrong. I'll change them in a sec. Look, then the bass line in A major is do te la le sol, and the bass line in minor is get ready do te la le sol. Right, we can still have that driving into the dirt kind of thing, right? And so, what we end up seeing is that progression-wise, it's better not to have normal than weird. Oops, I messed it up. Yeah, no. But to have major than minor. Where did it go, I wonder? Can you see it? Oh my goodness, this is, this is great. There we go. Let's just, let's fix it again. Sorry, everybody. It's better to have la than lay. Doesn't matter which one we expected in minor because the progression, the bass line, is the heart and soul of things. One, sorry, one to five. That, ex that sort of breathes life into that motion more. So even though 
In major, we did the normal one, then the weird one. In minor, it sounds so much more organic to put the modal mixture first. Ugh. Because it's about where we're heading, and it's about bringing our motion from tonic to dominant into even more clarity and almost to make it sound more inevitable. When we put... When we do it the other way and put lay first and then la, doesn't it kind of sound like we should go back upwards? La doesn't have that same into the ground downwards motion as lay. It doesn't have the gravity pulling us downwards the way that lay does. So in minor, when we're borrowing from major, we really, really tend to see this progression, which is the same as major. It doesn't switch around just because it's minor. The bass line is actually unified between the two keys. So that's a really cool thing about it, and that's where we really want to focus in on where the notes want to go, right? Tendency tones so often determine what happens. Lay to soul, that's kind of a tendency tone type motion. And so even though this is not what we expected, and even you can see I wrote the minor four going to a major four, so it sort of does weird then normal. That's superseded in a majorly, I think, tangible way by the bass line driving us downwards. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about here with um, using major in minor, borrowing from major into minor. Um, I don't want to take too much time, but really this is the progression in which we tend to see that. We don't have as much of that um, like mixing together the six chord or things like that. In minor, we have there's already kind of a, a lot of changing stuff that happens in minor already. Think about the way we've got those three forms. Think about the changes we've already made to minor with the leading tone. Um, we don't have as much of an expanded vocabulary in modal mixture to draw from. Um, this four, using the major four chord in this manner, tends to be the most significant and by far the most noteworthy thing to talk about. So there you go. We'll do a little practice with that.